it's Maxine. <laughs> I'm doing another video today. This one is, do all autistic people experience love the same way? And in this video, it was, um, my phone dropped. <laughs> so, okay. So in this video, uh, it was questions and it was couples like um whether it be two neurodivergent people or near um two autistic people or I think some of them were autistic with non-autistic I can't remember it was quite a while ago that I watched it but um some of the videos that I saw a long time ago before I decided to start making these forms of videos, um, I just went back quickly to get the questions from them. So I'm not like 100% clear on what, how everyone answered or the names of people and all of that. But anyway, um, so I changed some of the questions slightly to be more so for everybody to answer not just people in relationships at the moment so first question or first it's always a statement and I always call it a question but it's like a statement and then you say <laughs> and I always forget to say agree or disagree it's like strongly agree somewhat agree agree neutral disagree somewhat disagree strongly disagree <laughs> I always forget about just, um, anyway, so the first one is I fall in love quickly. <laughs> um, I don't know about like love, love, but, um, like I get, I used to get crushes easily and in my like first serious relationship, I think I probably did fall in love easily. I thought that like, oh, this is my person. And even though this person was really cruel to me at times and betrayed my trust and was kind of actually abusive to me in many ways, um, I probably would have married this person because I was just so, I just thought that, I don't know. Well, coming from an abusive environment as well, I thought that was the kind of love I deserved. But I can see that um, like, I probably do fall in love easily. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I have been selective too, but so yeah, a lot of my questions are always neutral because it's kind of like, I never, even though they say autistic people are very black and white with their thinking, um, I think I used to be a lot like that, but now I kind of see both sides so much so that it, whenever I answer a question, I'm already, always answering both sides to it. But uh, I have been selective and then I have given some people way more chances than they deserved. And maybe they, I was given more chances than I deserved as well. Um, but I think like initially going into things like say you're texting, you're talking with someone, whether it be online dating or you meet in person and I can see myself getting like excited early on and I've never been like the kind of person who plays the field where I'm talking to like numerous guys at the same time. I honestly can't even handle that. I couldn't even talk to more than one person at a time with online dating because <laughs> I'm like, okay, what did I tell this person already? And it's time consuming and it's just, it's not, it's not what I prefer. I know that's not really what the question's about, I, but I always do tend to explain a bit more about that. Um, Next, my partners have wanted more physical intimacy than I do. Um, I think so. I like there has, unfortunately, there's been times where I feel, um, well, I don't want to get into that, but, um, let's just say that I, like, I 
I know sex is important and it's important to me and I do enjoy that when I'm in a relationship with someone where I trust the person and it feels like there's a love for one another whether it be like actual love or just um love as one human to another um but I think I'm a bit more reserved when it comes to like public displays of affection and things like that because I remember in my very first relationship he wanted to like he was trying to be like very affectionate in person like one of our first dates was like at a fair where we're in line and there's I, like I guess I was like worried about anyone seeing me acting like that in public and you know and then there's kids around and stuff too so it just felt kind of weird to me I'm like I don't feel comfortable with like being too lovey-dovey like I am a physical person I always wanted to like hold hands and you know like that stuff is important but I I'm a bit more reserved than some like, you know, making out in movie theaters and stuff was just not something I enjoyed. It just creeped me out with other people all around. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, so I guess in a sense I'll say slightly agree. Um, they might have been the one to initiate more as well. And the past relationships I've had and situationships <laughs> new term I think next is uh, I am nervous when I enter a relationship I think yes I get really nervous and I get really anxious and I get like you know we used to say like the butterfly feeling and whatever but sometimes that's kind of an indication that things aren't okay but I think that with me being just an anxious person and being on the spectrum, it doesn't matter how good of a person that other person is. Like, it doesn't matter how calm, cool, collected they are and not, like, it doesn't matter how great they are. Like, I could still be anxious and still, even if they're, like, the type of person who would typically make people feel relaxed around them like with me it would I would still be really anxious going into things I always wanted things to be perfect like my makeup and hair and clothes and I'm somewhat of a messy person like keeping up with chores is hard for me sometimes having like a physical disability as well so but I always would go the extra mile to make sure things like were as perfect as possible when having people over which is also kind of a good thing because when I'm dating I tend to keep up with things or make more effort but um yeah like kind of that sick feeling is something like kind of like sometimes even when I would get contacted by like relationships I've had like I get this instant like it's like such a, I don't even know how to describe it, like such a crazy adrenaline, like I'm um, feeling in the pit of my stomach and in my body that sometimes it's almost like shaking, like you have the chills and it's not like a good feeling. It's not like a turned on. It's not like a sexual feeling. It's like a, I don't know <laughs> what. <laughs> um, so I'll say strongly agree for that especially enter because that's the question about entering a relationship eventually I think I get a bit more comfortable I haven't been in like very many long-term relationships so it's just an, I've been always been going through things and like moving and starting a new job starting new careers and then working on myself and my mental health and then finally when I was at a good point in my life where I probably could have started dating I just was dedicating so much time to my work that I just felt like and then all throughout this I've always been working on my physical health and my body and I, I always thought like oh I'm I can't do that until I get to this certain point like whether it be with my weight or my physical goals so I've just like really 
injured myself in like I don't know it's really hard like it's been a really long time since I've even been on the dating apps and when I was on them for a long time for years I just wouldn't even reply to anybody and it had nothing to do with who they were it was just kind of like just not ready and if I would talk to people from time to time I would like find red flags right away where I think I just have been hurt so many times in my past relationships that I'm like extremely picky now but the next one is um I want kids on the spectrum my whole life I wanted a family of my own and I wanted kids and this is before I knew about all my disabilities and like having a daycare for four years where sometimes I had up to seven kids myself with like an assistant but like when it was almost always just me with like four kids is like the legal limit in Manitoba being unlicensed so that's what I would have most of the time but then whenever I went over I would have like my mom stick around in the home just for like um for not to like really be hands-on but just to oversee so that if there was an emergency with me or anyone like we were safe um but like, I know I could be an awesome mom. I love kids so much. The kids loved me. The fam Most of the families loved me. I had problems like I'm sure a lot of daycares do with certain people. Um, but some of my kids were with me from like taking their first steps to going off to like preschool or kindergarten. And I really miss that. Um, I don't feel that personally that my disabilities could hinder me having kids in the future, but I don't think I'm going to bring kids into the world on my own. I would like to meet someone and that part of things might take a lot longer. And even though I'm 35 right now, it's still not something that might happen anytime in the future. But as for kids on the spectrum specifically, I mean, I would just want my kids to be happy and healthy and what disability or not I don't um I you know if if it is a genetic thing as some think then I'm sure I may have kids on the spectrum so at least I would like understand their needs a lot better and be a way more supportive parent than what I was given growing up and would be able to like break the cycle of abuse and make sure they feel safe and heard and I think that autistic people raising kids are the type of people who could raise kids that we kind of need in the world today where they're like aware of other people and they end bullying and cycles of abuse and we do have needs of our own but um you know not everyone wants kids and Every, and whether you have a disability or not, you are allowed, you know, I don't know what I'm saying, <laughs> I got distracted, but, um, and another thing too is, like, someday maybe down the road, maybe when I'm not living in a travel trailer, <laughs> I might be living in a travel trailer for a long time, so that's a factor too. I don't think I'd be raising kids in a travel trailer. I mean, maybe a fifth wheel, but the one I have is not really designed for long-term living. I mean, it's pretty good, but it's not homey feeling, but, um one day in the future if I had the financial means to do so I would love to foster as well and so I might be able to take on kids with autism and special needs so next is I have felt difficult to love <laughs> well I don't want to cry but yes I have and I just know I'm difficult to love it's not really like felt I just know that I am because with me comes a lot of 
my alarm went off and paused my video, but um, with me comes a lot of <sighs> you know, like not just aut autism, not just ADHD, but CPTSD and I do have a lot of strong beliefs, like I'm able to kind of answer these questions and see both points of view a lot of the time, but I do have very strong beliefs that not a lot of um, cis gender males like sort of feel the same about and I think people do tend to love things that are more familiar to them or if you have like similar beliefs like you can be opposites as in like uh, introvert extrovert and make a relationship work but your core values have to align and so, yeah, I wish it wasn't true, but I just feel like I am difficult to love and so strongly agree. Like, I feel like I'm easy to love in friendships. And when I had my daycare, I felt easy to love. I was very open and the families trusted me and the kids loved me. I feel like I'm easy to love in non, like, you know physical intimate relationships with like a partner I'm, I've been taken advantage of I've been when I've fully trusted and opened up I was like cheated on and all of my experiences has made me reserved and made me fearful and made me not trusting of people and not giving them the benefit like not going into things like being able to trust that person it's like they have to earn my trust well trust and respect should be given to people we shouldn't like have to go into things like assuming the worst or whatever but when you when it happens enough times it just yeah it just makes things tough but yeah, those are the questions. So, oh, did I explain that I got that from Jubilee Media again for YouTube? I hope so. Either way, I always include the link to the original video um, in the description and the comments. So if you want to check out the original, I highly recommend it. I love their channel and I love that the, the discussions they have to offer. And... and Yeah, <laughs> that last question just really gets to me, makes me feel sad that, but I know on the other hand, it's not just me feeling difficult to love. It's like the parameters, it's like the bubble that I've put myself in makes it difficult to love because I haven't allowed anyone in. So I think that I'm like a really good person in relationships I'm lovable I'm like accepting I like to spoil the person I'm with I'm affectionate I am spontaneous sometimes I like to go out and do things and be adventurous and not just stay home all the time and sightsee and I want to travel and there's things about me that make me lovable it's just that I have not allowed anyone in for a while and it does seem like when I have let people in, they're not, they don't love me because you wouldn't treat someone that way if you loved them. Okay, well, <laughs> until next time. Oh, and please like, subscribe. Oh my God, speaking about love, I just saw the cutest thing in the world. <laughs> it's like a couple riding one of those electric scooters together. <laughs> That's a good way to end my video. Look, it can happen for any. Everyone deserves love, no matter disability, ability, fat, skinny, young, old. Everyone's deserving. Talk to you next time.